Oh gosh. All right, we're gonna have to find a different chair. I'm gonna try this chair instead. <laughs> All right, what's going on guys? It's Omar Got Techie here. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about five things you should know before building a engine or doing some sort of turbo build. So if you guys watch my channel, you should know that I am having some troubles with my Integra right now. I might actually have to buy a new turbo. Uh, I'm still trying to figure out everything that I need to do on that to get it running. But this kind of inspired me to make this video because these are some things that I wish some people told me before I started my build. So this is definitely a good video for you guys out there that are thinking about starting an engine build. So I know the lighting in here is a little bit funky. Hopefully it's not too bad. It kind of makes me look, I don't know, super white or something. But I am prepared for this video. I got a little list here, so I will not forget anything in this video. But with that said, let's just go ahead and let's jump straight into this. So starting us off with number one is it will most likely cost you more than you think. So I know when I was starting my build, I was on the internet just kind of researching a couple of different parts. Some of the most, uh, the more important parts of the build, like the connecting rods, the pistons, um, the head, if I wanted to get the block sleeved and some things like that. Now I also had some friends out there telling me that it's only going to cost you like, you know, three grand, this and that. Now, uh, it is definitely not costing me only three grand. It's costing me a lot more than that And I'll probably make a video sometime in the future once I'm done with my build Explaining how much I actually put into my car and how much it cost me how to build it I mean how much it cost me to build it and explain to you guys what I actually have in the motor just for informational purposes Just so you guys know that uh, Some of these things that you read on the internet aren't always true and it's most likely gonna cost you more money than you expect. So like I said, I was expecting to only pay around three grand for my motor, but then I forgot about just kind of obvious things that I just forgot about. And honestly, it'll probably happen to you. I forgot about the distributor. That cost me like 200 bucks alone, which really sucked. Uh, I also forgot about all the gauges that I needed to buy, like the boost gauge, the oil pressure gauge and stuff like that. So there are little things that you might forget when you're initially doing your research and trying to piece everything together that you'll most likely have to buy in the future. So just know that it'll most likely cost you more than you expect to pay. So that brings us into number two here. It kind of ties into the first one and that is do not do it unless you have the money to do it right. So I'm not necessarily saying I did my motor right because I know I didn't in so many ways. I could have built the head, I could have put new cams on it, uh, I could have sleeved the block, I could have got that special, I don't know, some sort of, uh, it's kind of like sleeving but it's a lot cheaper. I forgot what it's called. Really what I'm saying is you have to buy the right parts for the engine. You can't really just cheap out and just buy the cheap parts because what's going to happen is you're going to spend all your money on the cheap parts and then they're gonna break or something's gonna happen to it. And then you're gonna be like, oh dang, if I were to just save that money and put it towards something better, uh, it could have lasted a lot longer or it couldn't even broke in the first place. Now, one thing I could think about right off the top of my head is my friend bought a little eBay uh, three bar map sensor off of eBay. Uh, I think it was like 40, 45 bucks or something like that. He put it on the car and it broke almost immediately. I don't know really what happened to it but basically it just crapped out and it doesn't work anymore. So now he has to go back and buy the good one and he could have saved that 45 bucks uh, towards the better one if he would have just went with the better one in the first place. But now he lost that money and it's never gonna come back basically. But there is plenty of other examples for this. Like if you don't buy the right head gasket and the head gasket blows, that's just a big pain in the butt. You have to take apart the whole head and take it off and replace the head gasket and hopefully nothing else is wrong with your car. So bottom line, what I'm saying is don't do it unless you have enough money to do it right. Don't cheap out, don't buy cheap parts just so you can get it done. You have to do it right the first time, otherwise you end up wasting a lot of money. So moving on into number three here is do not do it to your daily driver. Now, I know I'm saying that, I did it to my daily driver, but luckily I do have a couple cars here for my family that I could drive if I had to go to school, if I had to go uh, do some other, run some errands or whatever. But if it is your only form of transportation, I would suggest you do not do it or uh, before you start the build, try to get some other kind of car or just have some plans to get a ride from a friend if you have to be somewhere or some things like that. Now the main reason I say this is because it's most likely going to take longer than you think to get it all swapped in. Uh, honestly, I can't even remember when I pulled the motor out. I feel like it's been forever ago. 
Uh, it's probably been like four months now that that thing has just been in the driveway. Now, now you also have to put in consideration, I was working on another Teggy, completely swapped it and I actually sold it. So if you guys watch my channel, I actually did sold, sell the $500 Teggy. So thank you for that. Don't really want to explain the price that I sold it for, but I got a pretty good, pretty good uh, amount. So don't do it to your daily driver because it's going to take longer than you expect. Uh, things will go wrong and then you'll be out of car and you're gonna be like crap I wasted all this money on this car can't even drive it I don't have anything to drive anymore and then you're just gonna get mad you're just not gonna really have any more time to finish the build because you're gonna try constantly be trying to save up money to buy a different car and it's just a big fat pain in the butt so I do not suggest you do it to your daily driver unless you have another source of transportation now moving on into number four is make sure to do your research and do it very thoroughly so this kind of ties into number one because if you don't do your research you will most likely spend more than you expect uh, but like I said if you don't do your, all your research up front and make sure you know how much it's gonna cost at the beginning then you will most likely spend a lot more than you initially thought so you have to do it very thoroughly and make sure you know everything that you're gonna have to need for the engine so the first thing is obviously set your power goal uh, then you could go from there you can see okay if I want 400 horsepower can the block handle this stock or does it have to be sleeved uh, what kind of pistons can handle that what kind of connecting rods do I need uh, what kind of turbo uh, is are the stock camshafts good can I actually make that kind of power uh, 400 horsepower with the stock camshafts uh, valves there's just so many things you have to research and it does take a lot of time but I definitely do suggest you do it because when I was doing my build yeah I was researching it but I was kind of researching it while I was doing it now you will most likely do the same thing but I didn't set like an actual budget and uh, you know set a list and have everything that I need uh, and then you know try to figure out how much it'll all cost because I remember I tried doing that once but then I forgot a lot of stuff I had like the block I had the pistons this and that and I was like oh sweet okay I'm almost done but then I forgot the fuel pump I forgot the actual turbo I forgot how much it's gonna cost for the exhaust and how much it's gonna cost to weld the exhaust uh, that was very expensive and I it, it just it honestly sucks that all that money is gone but it definitely will be worth it once that thing is out on the out on the street and you know obviously you guys is will probably be too if you are doing a build but I'm just feeling a little bit discouraged right now just because I put so much money into that and I might have to put even more money into it just so I could drive it but that's kind of beside the point just do your research and make sure you know what you are doing what kind of components you need to put in the motor for your power goal um, how much it's gonna cost and everything like that if it's legal in your state uh, What you have to do if it's not legal just basically do as much research as you possibly can before you start the build Now last but not least we have number five here now. This one's kind of a little bit odd uh, I just threw this one in here I think it's something that you guys should know and it, this one is someone will always try to outdo you and your build so you go on YouTube you see all these guys obviously a lot of the guys on YouTube get paid a lot if they have a lot of subscribers so you're obviously not gonna be able to do as much as they do um, you'll probably have a couple of friends that have done something in the past or if they're doing a build and they're just like oh why are you doing this you could do this and make so much more power and this kind of just encourages you to spend more money which is a bad thing and you kind of just got to focus on your own build and not really worry about what anybody else is doing because it definitely can be hard to focus on your build when you have your friend over there telling you that he's gonna make way more horsepower than you he's putting in these different cams he's putting in cam gears he's putting in different valves he's getting his head ported and polished he's getting all this other stuff uh, it could kind of just throw you off your game and throw you off of what your plans were for the build and in the end you will most likely spend more money if you don't just stay true to your build and finish it the way that you originally planned. So basically what I'm saying here is stay focused on your build. Don't listen to friends or people you see. Uh, don't take their advice for uh, building a car because you're building it your way and they it, does, it just doesn't really matter. Because even if you go with them, there's always gonna be somebody out there that has a way better uh, engine or build, you know? Because honestly, I could build this thing so crazy, it's still not gonna top like half the Hondas out there I see some that are like 800 horsepower or something ridiculous I think there's an Integra out there that's like 
1200 horsepower i might be wrong on that i think it's around a thousand or something like that but it's absolutely ridiculous so there's always going to be someone out there trying to outdo you and you just got to stick to your build and finish it the way you originally planned and then it's just going to be an excuse to spend more money on your car you're just going to waste more money but you just have to stay focused on your build. So yeah, guys, that is five things that I think you guys should know before you build any sort of engine turbo build. I think they are pretty important things because when I was doing my build, like I said, I didn't have a lot of information. It's my first build. And now that I have a lot more knowledge on this, uh, I will most likely not be doing anything like this again until I get a stable job, have a decent savings and have my own daily driver. So yeah guys, that is it for this video. Let me know in the comments down below if you guys have any more, if you guys have done some builds in the past, uh, what you have learned about it, other things that I missed in this video. Also leave a like if you learned something new or if you just liked some of the points that I was making. So yeah guys, that is it. Now, as far as my Integra goes, just a quick little update. Uh, the turbo is leaking still and I do not know what to do. I called CX Racing, they're not gonna replace the turbo. so. I'm gonna get a smaller oil restrictor and see if that helps because honestly, I don't know if the seal is blown. Like I said, I am still learning a lot about my car and a lot about this whole build process. And I don't think the turbo seal is broken because if the turbo seal was broken, I'm pretty sure there would be a lot of white smoke coming out the exhaust and there's absolutely no uh, smoke coming from the exhaust. So hopefully I just have to replace the restrictor. Fingers crossed, pray to God that that is all that needs to be done because I am not looking forward to spending any more money on this. Like I said, it's honestly insane how much I've spent on this thing and I can't wait to do a video. Not to brag, just to give you guys some information of how much it actually cost me to do this build because it sucks uh, when I was looking over the information and I could have just bought a better car. But it is cool to build a car and it's definitely a great experience. So yeah guys, that is it for this video. Subscribe if you're not already to follow the Techie Build or to see some more videos like this. Check out my channel uh, if you guys are new. Uh, to see some taggy videos mainly about Hondas. But with that said, I'll see you guys in my next video. Peace out, guys.